So underneath here is a lot of different paintings. And I mean, I probably stretched up the actual canvas about I mean, years ago. So, so really? then it's oh, really? then, really yeah, really yeah, yeah, time so it's actually, uh, yeah. I mean, to the point, I can't even quite remember when it actually began life as a picture. And then, partly, I think, because the way I work on them, they're quite sort. Of, the surfaces are almost quite invisible, in a certain extent, um, which means they can be kind of worked over and worked over again so so paintings can disappear quite quite easily so and so the point where you wouldn't you wouldn't know that yeah that there was this many different pictures going on underneath so they so yeah so things have been painted on got resolved left come back to doesn't work get rid of it and and it starts yeah life all over again as a as a painting um I mean, it's not quite invisible what goes on underneath because there's part of the ways that the pictures have sort of developed over time is a, is a certain kind of surface. Um, but so even though it's very sort of refined, it has a certain quality over a certain time. It builds up a certain type of, uh, I say, even though it's almost on the, it could be one coat or look like one coat on the surface of it, there is, Accumulations of layers, which I don't know, creates a, I don't know, comes that kind of density, I suppose, to the to the paint in some ways. So, you're actually aware of doing that, or do you just feel that, that happens if you. What we around what, what conscious of the how you um, the external influences coming in. I mean, do you, is it something you actively seek, or you? I mean, I do because I think, as I say, because there is, I say, a tendency to for the work to become a a certain kind of in, internal dialogue between the parts. Um, and whilst that interests me, and I think that's part of the nature of the work, that there is a, a kind of syntax or a, or a, a composing or a, or a, I don't know, I mean, autonomy is too strong a word, but if it's nevertheless, uh, there is a, a field of activities going on in the painting. So yeah, I can totally focus within the work, um, whilst at the same time, having this, this voice outside me saying, you know, is it becoming too detached, too distant from anything irrelevant to those, uh, those kind of qualities, experiences, surfaces that are out there. Um, subject matter, I suppose, um, in a way, you know, you know so, so, so yeah, there's always that, uh, you know, just odd balances, I suppose, odd oscillations of uh, drifting one way and being pulled back another way, then drifting another way, being pulled back another way. One's, I suppose, identity is constructed through this process of making and these, and I think obviously because the amount of time that one gives to being in here, putting the work together, then then there are, like we say, certain kind of rules of doing things, certain kind of limits of doing things, certain habits, certain kind of. Uh, systems that you begin to work in so i suppose when you take that away then that sense of what constitutes an identity starts to you know is sort of um is um undermined so yeah. so i think yeah in terms of the ways that one yeah kind of constructs a set of kind of habits and a certain sense of um kind of investment within a within the space of the studio then then yeah, then definitely it feels like yes, something's being kind of undermined when, when, yeah, when it. we're not doing it. Yeah, I mean, perhaps it's just that that distinction of work for somebody else and working within rules and limitations. Um, but again, this is this what we were discussing again, I suppose, about the idea of having rules that you establish yourself to work within. So they become quite so, work like. So yeah, yeah. So it's a, a slightly contradictory. Um, on the one hand, yeah, wanting to be here and making that choice, um, and there's a sense of, I suppose, freedom attached to that that choice in that uh, that if one is under no obligation or external obligation to fulfil something, uh, but at the same time, yeah, one starts to construct these kind of rules and yeah, anything that can range from a rule, a habit, 
or at extremes becomes yeah sort of prohibition what you can what you can't do so so in some yeah those it's a, perhaps the rules that one imposes oneself become more um, strict and in some ways and elaborate um, in yeah how the day is structured so I think yeah so so yeah there is a, a certain kind of subject matter I suppose or a, a kind of uh, expression going on within the paintings that organises what you might call the raw material or the material facts of the picture or those constitutive forms of the paint, whatever it is, um, line, colour, uh, pigment, surface. Um, so all those, yeah, those constitutive elements of raw facts of painting are being those, yeah, kind of squashed into certain expressions to do with uh, um, a particular idea that form and structure come to organise those 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 kind of arbitrary things or those arbitrary raw materials. Um, and again I think that's probably what I was trying to say in relationship to yeah things starting out as arbitrary um, like a set of materials might be arbitrary in a sense. Tubes filled with paint, brushes of a certain size, liquid mediums, yeah, yeah all kind of arbitrary unformed things um, and the paintings having that initial kind of arbitrary quality as certain rough things are put down and then perhaps it is a bit like these these uh, um, I'm always going to call them laws coming in to organize it but you know perhaps more you know certain yeah expressions forming those raw materials organizing those forms giving kind of shape to that kind of raw material so to move it from an arbitrary state into a kind of internal architecture um, so so again that's a dual thing on being internal to the painting into those materials and one coming from perhaps a more external source shaping a certain or trying to almost echo a certain kind of shaping of space or a or a, a certain kind of optical rhythm that I might have seen. So even though they might not be referring to something quite specifically or directly, um, I was still think of it in terms of a type of uh, architecture going on within the organisation of the, of, of the paintings um, and a certain, yeah, kind of, um, yeah, yeah, on one hand a certain kind of physical literal partitioning up of the paintings. On the other hand, trying to draw on structures which would almost be a kind of optical partitioning and making of a space within a pictures. Um, I suppose in some sense those spaces referring to a type of experience that might be out there in in this environment, possibly to do with it a certain experience that's kind of going on beneath the surface or is uh, expressive almost by the fact of not being expressionist or expressive so so in one sense yeah it's either that it is just kind of blank and being in a non yeah responsive way to you um, almost um, quietly aggressive in the way you know that people don't respond to you or don't laugh when you talk to them, um, make you feel uncomfortable. Um, so it's probably that type of non-expressiveness I kind of find might be interesting I and mean, perhaps why I might kind of, kind of gloomy in some ways that it, um, that it is affecting, yeah, it might try to affect uh, on one level a type of non-responsiveness or, um, yeah, be quite hermetic in one level. There is, I suppose, uh, a, a type of objectivity or a, a kind of mechanisation or that uh, acknowledgement of a lack of freedom or free will in the way that a gesture is put down and, um, and, and a certain kind of awareness of actions, habits, gestures shaped by whatever external forces, conventions, uh, 
um, habits that come from the outside. Um, so, so there's a certain kind of, say, kind of acknowledgement of that, I suppose, in the way that the paintings are put together. But nevertheless, I think, yeah, that there is this sort of residual interest that at some level there are these kind of infinite potentials to use a gesture or a form of application that might not be totally shaped within those limits and those kind of confines or those kind of conventions. Comfort's probably not quite the right word, but there's a, there's a certain, I know, perhaps a gratification, pleasure to, to being inside of a, a process or a gradual unfolding of something that never comes to completion um, because it, I don't know, there's perhaps in a fragmented way that one works and it's almost like you can come back into it and be in the middle and not having to start and uh, necessarily invent it again. So, so you know, perhaps it was a, psychologically it was almost a kind of uh, a good way to be inside of something but, but the, the downside of it is a kind of year goes by and there's still <laughs> no, nothing to actually put down on slide. Um, and again, that's why so many things get painted over, because it's, uh, they might be complete in terms of filling up one type of logic, but they're still an irritant because they haven't worked. And so, so I think, again, that's why certain of these pictures hang around for so long, because um, there's, yeah, it's almost, a, yeah, the more time that one invests in something, I suppose, uh, the more of a, um, um, you know, almost kind of responsibility there is to have yeah. it be right in a certain way. Well, there's a kind of nice paradox to it on the one hand, you know, this thing that accumulates so much time into one surface but doesn't fill these volumes of space that's kind of compacted um, and, yeah, it doesn't mean there's these kind of endless stacks of paintings in a studio so it'd all be uh, all kind of almost compressed into, into time rather than space filling up the studio, painting after painting. You, you do get to think, I mean, I'm trying to see whether I get a sense of the, the amount of layers in terms of the... Yeah, I mean, I think you'd get it more if you lifted it up in weight terms. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it, that's yeah, really yeah, I mean, I really don't think you... Um, no, I mean, I think you just wouldn't realise at all that it was uh, the amount um, it's interesting what you said about the way it actually yeah. I mean, that actually hadn't occurred to me, but the must... Yeah, the, yeah no, they, are, they, are, they are surprisingly dense. Um, but no, I, don't, I mean, visibly, I don't think one would get that sense um, in the way, perhaps... I mean, certain, obviously, yeah, certain painters where, you know, you feel, see the, that, that visual mass of oil paint coming around the edge and it's yeah, very much... Uh, one thing layered onto this, so so because of the layers are painted so thinly um, and brushed down in such a refined way, then it's almost like I suppose uh, millionths of a millimeter surfaces going on each time. So they're very yeah, extremely kind of thin skins of paint um, going over the surface. So 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 in <clears throat> terms of the, the kind of visibility being kind of literally announced on the side to say that this was uh, this is a thick dense mass of paint then no it's not visible there i mean i kind of think it might be visible on the surface just because of the way it um goes slightly waxy after a while because the more layers that go on the more absorbency takes place in the paint and seems to suck back the the kind of the oiliness of it, or the, uh, or the, 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 the kind of, yeah, it's almost like, yeah, the, the, the oily speed of the paint, paint is sort of sucked back, so, so I think the paint becomes kind of almost more mineral and dense. You've got about 30 seconds to tell a joke if you want to, yeah. yeah, well I did read some good ones last night, but, uh, <laughs> but in this context they might not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't work. It won't work. Painting's not funny, it's just not funny. <laughs>